Hello, my name is Tammy Medlin and I am the local history librarian here at the Wilson County Public Library and I would like to thank you for joining me for the history of Black Creek. Opening in March 1840, the Wilmington to Weldon Railroad ran on 160 miles of track and was the longest railway in the world. One of its early stops was a small community about 60 miles from Raleigh called Barnes Depot in future Wilson County. Although the area was first settled in 1779, the new railroad brought prosperity and Barnes Depot received its first post office just four months later with Bunyan Barnes as the first postmaster. Later renamed Black Creek, the community was not incorporated until 1870 thanks to delays called by the Civil War. There were two other depots in Wilson County, Joiners, which became Elm City, and Toys Knot, now known as Wilson. This brick depot was constructed by Wilmington and Weldon Railroad in 1899, replacing an earlier wooden building. It was torn down in 1978. The post office has moved several times since Mr. Barnes's day. It is presently located at 101 Central Avenue and has remained a vital part of the community for 183 years. As you will see later in this film, Schools have always played an important part in the Black Creek community. This is Farrell School, believed to have been built sometime between 1885 and 1895 and named for local landowner Joseph Farrell. This was the first free school in the community. Free meaning students did not have to pay tuition. African American students would have attended the One Room Brooks School, which was also built in the latter part of the 19th century. It operated until 1951. A list of early Black Creek businessmen proves there were general stores, boarding houses, and even saloons in Black Creek. Attorneys and druggists were also listed. This is a photo of the bar room located at the back of Privet's store. There is no date on this photo, but records prove the store was in business by 1904. Pictured left to right are Leon Taylor and Luther Barnes. Unfortunately, the name of the third man is unknown. The owners and patrons of Privet's store may have done business with the Bank of Black Creek, which opened in 1917. However, after being robbed in 1920, it was quickly sold to Planners Bank before closing in 1931 during the Depression. The building later served as the town police department. A year after the bank was sold to planners, Dr. A. Jones Smith opened his practice in Black Creek. Fifty years later, during an interview with the Wilson Times, he recalled making house calls in a Model T Ford, but pointed out the roads were something else. He said he was on his way to deliver a baby, he referred to it as a start call, when his car became stuck in the mud when Contentna Creek flooded. He was rescued by a friendly farmer, a sometimes stubborn mule, and a sturdy wagon. Was he in time? Yes, we made it, but the stork wasn't far behind. That infant was, more than, was one of more than 4,000 Dr. Smith delivered during his career. According to him, being a doctor in those days simply meant that you had to meet situations head on and do the best you could with what you had. But now you see it's a whole new ball game. He recalled that back then it was largely a matter of prescribing hard medicines like quinine and calomel and fighting pain and epidemics of typhoid, diphtheria, smallpox, and whooping cough. Dr. Smith passed away in 1978. Construction on Black Creek School began in 1919 on land donated by Paul Lee Woodard. The school housed grades 1 through 12 and was renamed in Mr. Woodard's honor in 1936, becoming Lee Woodard High School. Five years after the school was renamed, many of its graduates went off to fight in World War II. Jesse D. Acock Jr. served in the Army Air Corps and was wounded fighting the Japanese. In a 1943 interview with the Wilson Times, he declared, you can't stop fighting up there in the air over enemy territory just because you have a few scratches. 
other World War II Purple Heart winners from Black Creek included William Barnes, Pierpont Bass, Archie Bass, Paul Batts Jr., Robert Boswell, Wade Brooks Jr., Millard Ezell, William Langston, Frank Lucas Jr., Henry Lucas, Paul Lucas, Jesse Mercer, Charles Rose, Matthew Rose, Robert Strickland, Walton Thompson, Lonnie Williams, and Ira Yelverton. William Bridges and Jarvis Godwin won Purple Hearts during the Korean War. Fifteen men from Black Creek served in World War I. Unfortunately, I was unable to find a list for Vietnam. I wish I could have listed every veteran. When the soldiers returned home, they found that Lee Woodard remained at the center of community life. Let's take a look at some of the people who worked there over the years. Miss Mary B. Cox taught first grade from 1946 until 1978. One of my best friends is a teacher and she has always told me you want to stay on the good side of the lunchroom staff. This is a photo from the Panthers Paul Lee Woodard yearbook in 1960. Pictured left to right are Miss Lily Lancaster, Miss Lisa Pope, Miss Hattie Pittman, and Miss Esther Smith, the manager. If you work in a school, it's also a good idea to remain on friendly terms with the cleaning staff. They're the ones who take care of your room and always know how to find everything. Pictured are Tina Pleasant and Ernest Tomlin. Miss Pleasant is listed in the yearbook as a maid. I was unable to find Mr. Tomlin's job title, but it may have been janitor. Both are listed simply as staff. In the 1950 census, both were list living in Black Creek. Mrs. Pleasant was listed as a widow who worked in housekeeping and had at least two daughters and a son, while Mr. Tomlin was never married, lived with his mother, and, was and his job work was listed as carpentry. I can find evidence Miss Pleasant lived in Black Creek for over 30 years, while Mr. Tomlin does not appear before 1950. I do not know how long he stayed because the data from the 1960 census has not yet been released. Mr. William Lewis was principal of Lee Woodard during the 1960s and 70s. This is a photo of him and his wife, Sarah. Permission to use the photo was given by Mr. Jim Lewis. If you would like to take a look at other Lee Woodard staff, the yearbooks for 1958, 1959, 1960, 1961, 1962, and 1963 can be found online at digitalnc.org. Mr. Lewis was a proponent of the school's tobacco program. In addition to the land the school stood on, Paul Lee Woodard also donated a nearby farm. The Wilson County School Board were the trustees and they leased out the farm. The money from the rent went to the school. In 1972, the school itself leased the farm to see if they could make a profit. School staff, parents, students, and other members of the community pitched in to help with the tobacco harvest. Most people worked as croppers or loopers. Cropping involved breaking the broadest limb leaves, usually the ones on the bottom of the plant. In a few days, the same field would be harvested and the leaves would be broken off further up the stem. The last step was stripping, pulling any remaining leaves from the plant. This is a photo of one of the looping crews, workers who tied the tobacco to the sticks before they were hung in the barn to cure. People doing this job had to be quick and good with their hands. As you can see, this was often a job for children. After tobacco was cured and removed from the barn, it had to be graded, packed, or sheeted, and taken to market. Pictured here are some of the more than 60 people who helped with barning or putting in the tobacco. Later that year, volunteers harvested 20 acres of grain from the farm, and someone donated the profit from selling three acres of their own soybeans. The school made enough money to add lights to the ball field and purchase a brand new activity bus, which cost $8,927, which could be used by the entire school. The project was so successful, it became a yearly event. The last class graduated from Lee Woodard High School in 1978 
and the building was demolished 10 years later. The gym, cafeteria, and agricultural building became part of the new Lee Woodard Elementary. Leaders are as important as schools to their communities. Elected in 1977, Ralph M. Smith served 29 years as mayor before his death in 2006. Let's take a look back at his time in office. Mayor Smith was an early proponent of the Black Creek Library, which opened in November 1989. Today, it is staffed by Chelsea and Mariah. Stop in and say hello. In the mid-90s, Mayor Smith began to push for a community building as there was nowhere for people to gather or meet. The town commissioners agreed and began to raise money for the project. Donations were sought as they did not want to raise taxes. Yard sales, golf tournaments, and other fundraisers were held. Mayor Max Smith remembers that his father suffered a stroke, and as part of his recovery, he went for walks, and as he walked, he collected cans. Friends and neighbors gave him more cans or turned them in themselves. Those cans brought in $2,500. The new Black Creek Community Building opened in August 1999. Measuring 40 feet wide and 75 feet long, it provided over 3,000 square feet of space and was soon a popular location for meeting and events. The town had raised $36,000 and Mayor Smith and his family had contributed at least half that amount. In that same year, Mayor Smith had a conversation with Ellen Dawson. He stated he wanted Black Creek to have a festival for two reasons. Families who could not go on a vacation could have fun and bring the community together at the same time. That wish became Heritage Day, which was held November that year after being delayed by Hurricane Floyd. The celebration provided much needed stress relief for the area. There were food and craft vendors, along with country and gospel music. A turkey walk, bingo games, and a cake walk were held in the new community building. This is a photo of the first Heritage Day. Mayor Raff Smith danced with Miss Rachel Cross. A Little Miss and, and Little Mr. Pageant was also held during Heritage Day. Little Miss Pageant winner was Natalie Nicole Boykin, age three, and the Little Mr. was Austin Thompson, who was 22 months old. One of Mayor Smith's last projects was obtaining a grant to renovate the town park. Improvements included new playground equipment, more lights, and a walking track, along with a new grill and tables for the picnic area. The project was completed in 2006, soon after his death, and the park was renamed Ralph M. Smith Memorial Park. Black Creek continues to move forward thanks to the work of its current mayor, commissioners, and town employees. Evidence of this can be seen in the new EMF South Station, which opened November 2nd, 2021, and in the new Sheriff Substation, which opened earlier this month. Pictured left to right, Deputy Jose Rodriguez, Major Futrell, Corporal Monquel Anderson, Candy Minshew, Sheriff Calvin L. Woodard Jr., Mayor Ralph Max Smith, Ellen Dawson, Ronald Lucas, and Larry Sam Price. And here are the people who keep the town running. Back row left to right, Ty Davis, Greg Gates, Chris Bailey, and Caleb Davis. Front row, Cindy Daughtry, Anna Gardner, Daniel Boyette, and Jimmy Tucker. Thank you for joining me for the history of Black Creek. This is one project I thoroughly enjoyed. I want to give a special thanks to Mayor Max Smith, Mrs. Candy Minshew, Ms. Sharon Blizzard, Mrs. Ellen Dawson, and Mr. Jim Lewis. Please join us for our next video when we take a look at the history of Stantonsburg. Thank you.